topic 8. Inside of topic 8, we will learn about the interest. There are two types of interest that we will learn. First is about simple interest and second is about compound interest. Okay, I will separate into two video. For A is about simple interest and for the B is about the compound interest. Okay, we will discuss about simple interest first. There are only two formula which is interest equal to I equal to PRT and the future value is equal to S equal to P plus I. Okay. Simple interest. Simple interest is the easiest way since you know that when you invest the money, you do pelaburan, you invest the money, you get the interest. Okay. You get the income which is you get the interest. We call that the income you get is called the interest. Okay. The second one, when you borrow a money, you take a loan or you borrow some money, then you will be charged with the interest. Okay. There are two ways you will get the interest. First, based on the invested. And second, is based on how you borrow the money or you take a loan. Okay. Simple interest can be calculated using I equal to PRT. Where I is a simple interest, P is principal, or we call that the money, how much you, your money you borrow or you invest, and R is the simple interest, and T is the time, must be in year, okay? If your time is in month, change it into a year, okay? T must be in year. I is simple interest, again, P is a principal, means that the amount you borrow, okay, principal, which about the amount you borrow, how much you borrow, or how much you invest, is the P. And R is the rate, how rate the interest is. And T is a time, where must be in years. Let's say, find the amount of interest charge for the following loan. Okay, let's say a loan is 10,500, which rate equal to 52.25% for 4 years. Okay. And then, using I equal to PRT, you want to find that The amount of interest charge I equal to PRT where the P is 10,500 R is 52.25 Change it into decimal point which is divide by 100 0 0.5225 and T is 4 which is 4 years Okay, time must be in years So you substitute this one P, R and T and you get that 21,945. The interest will be charged during 4 years is 21,945. Okay. P, R, T. P is 10,500. R is 0 0.525. And R, T in the 4. Which is you get 21,945. Okay. Okay. This is a rate R. This is T. And this is P. Okay. A loan. The amount your money you borrow is 10,500. Okay. Just multiple V P R T and you get that 2,100 to 21,945. Next, suppose that you have a loan, you borrow a money which is P2800, which R is 7% during a 30 month, 30 month which is T. So what you will do, first R will change into 0 0.07, which is R equal to 7%, which is R equal to 7 divided by 100. 
and R is 0 0.07. T must be in year. Okay, T equal to 30 months. You know that one year have 12 months. So, to change into year, 30 divided by 12 become... Twenty-two point five years, or you can just put like this one, and P R T. You get that the interest will be charged is about four hundred and ninety ringgit. Okay, suppose that you have one thousand, you invest two years in a bank, earning simple interest. When they say that simple interest. Is a S is I equal to P R T. Okay. When they said simple interest, the formula is I equal to P R T. Okay. P is 1000. Okay. You invest the money. T is two years in a bank. And 8% per annum means that 8% per year, which is R equal to 8%, or you can say that 8 divided by 100 equal to 0 0.08. So, you substitute P, R, and T, you get that interest that will be charged about the interest you get because they are inverse, so the interest you get is 100 and 60. Okay. Maturity value. Okay. Maturity value is denoted by S. Where the maturity value should be paid is called the maturity date. Since the maturity value is the sum of borrow and the interest charge. Looks like this one. You have a timeline. Okay. This is the initial one when you borrow the money. And this is the maturity date that you should pay back how much the money you borrow. Okay. This is the time. Okay. The time length. How, how, may, how many times, how many months or how many years. You need to pay back for the maturity date. And during the time, you will be charged about the interest. Okay? To get that, what is the S at the end? How much the money you should pay is S equal to P plus I. Okay? The amount you borrow and the amount... The interest, the interest will be charged. Okay, amount you borrow and the interest you will be charged. Okay, S is the maturity value, P is the principal of the or the amount you pinjam. You pinjam berapa adalah P. I is the simple interest. Okay, interest yang you dikenakan, interest will be charged during that time, and T is the duration or loan, duration of loan or deposit. Must be in years. Okay. Again, you have a timeline. P is the time you borrow, how much money you borrow, for how long you take until you must pay back, which is S is maturity date at the end of date, which is TT, and during the date until the time you must pay, you will charge with the interest. So, S equal to P plus I, which is the amount you borrow and the interest will be charged. P plus I, you know that I equal to PRT. You can factorize this one. 1 plus RT. So, the formula will be S equal to P, 1 plus RT. Let's say you have 10,000, you invest. Okay, you invest the money 
for four years nine months in a bank earning a simple interest. The keyword is simple interest, okay? Which is a rate about 10% per annum. Find the amount at the end of the investment period. Means that you invest 10,000 selama 4 tahun 9 bulan yang mana dia punya rate interest dia adalah sebanyak 10% setahun dan berapakah jumlah amount yang you dapat ok means that we want to find that the amount at the end of the 4 years 9 months first I want to change the time first T equal to 4 years 9 months which is 4 plus 9 divided by 12 which is you get that 0 0.75 years and you get that 475 years okay p is 10000 r is 10% means that 10 divided by 100% you get that 0 0.1 okay just put that p 1 plus rt okay the formula is 10000 1 plus 0 0.1 and 40 is 475 and you get that at the end is 40,750 okay or you can do like this one i equal to prt you know that you know that 10,000 for p r is 0 0.1 T is 4.75 you get that four seven fifty and the formula you know that S at the end S equal to P plus I, which is P is 10,000, you invest, plus 4750 I, and you get that 14750. Okay, it's the same 14750. Okay, you can do either this one you use directly, or you can do separately one by one. Okay. Rahan invests 5,000 in investment fund for 3 years. At the end of the investment period, his investment will be worth 61525. Find the simple interest rate. We want to find the R. Kita nak cek R sekarang ni. Okay. What we'll do, I do a timeline. Okay, your P is 5,000, your S is 615, this is P, this is S, your P is 5,000, your S is 6125, your T is equal to 3 years, okay, 3 years. Your investment was 6125 at the end. Okay. But you don't know what is the R. The rate. Okay. So what I do. I want to find the rate. First P is 5000. You know that S equal to P plus I. So, S is 6, 1 to 5. P is 5,000 plus I. So, I move this one to the left side. 6, 1 to 5 minus 5,000. You get that I equal to 1, 1 to 5. Okay. I equal to PRT. 1, 1 to 5 equal to P is 5,000. Original P is 5,000. R you doesn't know. You want to find the R. But you know T is 3 years. Okay. You know that T is 3 years. T kita 3 tahun. So, I just move this one. 
to the left side and R equal to 0 0.75 or 7.5 percent. Okay, I will show you one one to five from this one is equal to fifteen thousand R. Okay, five thousand multiple with three become lima belas ribu. I move this one to the left side. 1, 1, 2, 5 divided by 15,000 and R you get will be 0 0.075 okay want to change into 100% so you multiple with 100 and you get that 7.5% okay Next, there are four basic concepts. How you want to calculate the interest for simple interest? Okay, there are four basic concepts. First, exact time. Exact time means that the number of day between two given date, either it is be 365 for a year or 366 for a leap year. Tahun lompat adalah 366. For approximate time, ordinary time, we assume that for one month is 30 days. Okay. For one month, 30 days. Doesn't calculate using calendar. Kalau calendar, if calendar, we have like 31 days, 30 days, 29 days or something like that one. But for approximate and ordinary time, we assume that every month have 30 days. Okay. If they are exact time, 365 or 366 for a leap year follow the calendar approximate we assume that 30 days for every month every month only have 30 days exact interest exact interest we assume that one year have 365 days or we have that 366 days for a leap year Similarly, use a calendar. Okay. For ordinary interest, we assume that a month have 30 days. So, one year we have about 360 days. Okay. Please make sure you don't do a mistake. Exact time where you have a timeline. Okay. Let's say you have that. 2 March 2020 to until 9 April, 9 September 2020. So you must calculate how many days from 2 March until 9 September. Okay, using calendar. Okay, but approximate time from 2 March 2020 until 9 September 2020 you must calculate using a month which is 30 days okay but for exact interest you have about 365 days if a late year 366 days if ordinary interest you have about 360 days Make sure you doesn't do a mistake. This is for interest, exact interest, ordinary interest. But this one is exact time, T, ordinary time, okay, time, exact time, approximate time, exact interest, ordinary interest. Or you can say look like this one. Exact time you must calculate using calendar, okay. Okay, approximate time you calculate using 30 days in a month. Okay, exact interest you use 366 or 365. Okay, for ordinary interest you use 360 days. Okay.
Okay. Time. Exact time. Approximate time at the above. Exact interest 365 or 366. Ordinary interest 360. For example, 1,000 was invested starting from 15 March 2019. Okay. You borrow from P, you must pay back at S, maturity, 1,000. Okay. Starting from 5 March 29. And you must pay back at 29 August 2019. Okay. Which the R rate is 10% or equal to 0 0.1. Okay. To get the time, you must calculate from 16 March until 29 August. Okay, to calculate this one, you must use your calculator. Okay, Okay, exact time and exact simple interest. Okay, we want to find the interest, which is I equal to PRT. First, we want to find exact time and exact simple interest. So, means that our T is exact time using calendar starting from 15 March. Fifteen March, okay. Starting from fifteen March until thirty-one March. So you have thirty-one minus fifteen. You have sixteen days, and then March, April. April, you have 30 days. And then May. May, you have 31 days. And then you have June. June, you have 30 days. Using calendar, because exact time. July, you have 31 August 31 Okay, wait We receive on 29 August So you have 29 Okay, starting 1 August Until 29 29 days So if I calculate this one Okay 16 plus 30 Plus 31 Plus 30 plus 31 plus 29. You have that 137 days. Okay. From using calendar, you calculate from 16, 15 March until 29 August, you get that 137 days. Okay. To find the simple interest. Exact time and exact simple interest P R is 0 0.1 697 divided by 3665 is 365 And because you know that 2019 is not a leap year 2019 divided by 4 If you get the exact answer Doesn't have any decimal point So it is not a leap year It is not 
if you get the exact answer doesn't have decimal, then it is a leap year. If they have decimal, that is not a leap year. You get that 504.75. Okay, you know the you know now that 2020 this year is a leap year divided by four. You get that 505. That's why this year is a leap year. Okay, so it's not a leap year. So 177 days. Okay, P R T 167 divided by 365. You will get that 45.75 ringgit. Similarly for this one. P R T, but this T exact time, ordinary simple interest. You have one year three hundred and sixty days, since you assume that six uh, thirty days a month. So, but you assume tiga puluh hari sebulan untuk ordinary simple interest. So it be three hundred and sixty days. Okay, you get that forty six seven forty six point thirty nine. For this case, it's approximate time. Okay, for approximate time, starting from 15 March until 29 August, 15 March until 29 August, okay, I want to calculate for approximate time, so 30 minus 15 equal to 15 days, okay, March, April, 30, May, 30, June, 30, July, 30, August, 29, August, 29. Okay. I calculate this one. 90, 50 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30. Plus 30 plus 29, you get that 164 days. Okay, that's why P R and T, which is six uh, 164 divided by 365, because exact simple interest. Interest is 365 or 366 is a leap year. Okay. For this one, P, R and T, but it's ordinary simple interest is 360. So divide by 360, you get that 45.56. Okay. Next one. Suppose that Mary borrowed 3,000 from bank starting from 24 January 2011. You have a timeline. This is P. This is S. Okay. You have a timeline which is starting from 3,000 you borrow. Okay. When loan ended, she pay back 3, 4, 5. Five and simple interest R is ten percent T you need to find T starting from find the date of payment. Okay, the last one they say that find the date of payment. So P R okay, this is a P. R 0.1 S okay using formula S equal to P1 plus RT okay I move this one to the left side it become divide bahagi 3000 pindah ke sana jadi bahagi okay this is R uh, uh, 1 
plus R and T. R is 0 0.1. Okay? And you get that 1.150. I move this one. You minus 1. 0 0.1 T. Okay? Move 1 to the left side. Become minus 0 0.1 T. Okay? And 1.105 minus 1. You get that 0 0.15. And then... I move 0 0.1 to the left side. Jadi bahagi. Divided 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.1. 1.5. Means that 1 year 6 month. This is 1.5 years. Okay. If I separate it become 1 year 6 month. So I just calculate 24 January until 24 January 2012. One year, okay. Start January, January to February one one month until July. You get that six month, so it get that twenty four July two thousand twelve. Okay, that is the date you need to pay at the end of the loan. Next one is a banker's rule. Banker's rule is the four way to compute simple interest and mostly popular among financial institutions is exact time ordinary simple interest. Because usually the bank will use this one, we call that banker's rule, to calculate the dividend. Okay, dividend or interest that will be charged. For bank, they will use that calendar. Exact time is about the calendar. You calculate the date using calendar. Divide by 360. Okay. It's a common practice for the bank. We call that as the banker's rule. Okay. Because this gives a maximum interest in any transition. Okay. You have... If you borrow money, they will calculate using a date of the calendar, but you divide by 360 days. For example, the question say that you have 5,000 from a bank starting from 30 March 2009. If the accumulated amount is 5021.67, simple interest. Okay, the keyword simple interest rate is 6% per annum. Find the debt repayment using a banker's rule. Okay, you have P, you have S, 5,000, 5,001.67, starting from 30 March, 2009. The question asks you find the date. So you want to know the date. But the R is equal to 6% which is 0 0.06. Similarly like before. Okay. S equal to P1 plus RT. I move 5000 to the left side. Okay. I move 5000 bahagi dengan 5000. You get at 1 plus 0 0.060. T. Okay. Yang bahagi ini, divided, it's become 1.004334. Okay, I take all of that decimal point because I want, I don't want to do a miscalculation. Okay, we want to calculate time. I move one to the left side. Jadi minus. Okay, 0 0.060 equal to 0 0.004334. 1 minus 1 is become 0 0.04334. I move 6. Jadi bahagi. Divided. And you get that T equal to 0 0.223333. Okay. I multiple which here which is 360 days. You get that 26 days. Okay. You get in years. Change multiple which 300. 60 days, you get that 26 days. Okay. 
Why I multiple with 360 days? Because bankers rule calendar divide by 360. So one year you calculate using 360 days. So you calculate from 30 March until 25 April you get 26 days. So at the end your answer is 25 April 2019. Okay. Similarly for this case Okay <clears throat> You have 2000 on April 2009 Account the offer are simple interest per year if the exact simple interest earned on 8 July is 92 ringgit. Find the exact time of the investment and the value of R using the exact time. First, what you will do, you do a timeline first. You have an P, you have an S. Okay. Harry safe. To start 12,000, the simpan 12,000 on 20 April 2009. Okay. The R we doesn't know how much the rate is, but you know that I is equal to 92. Okay. Interest a not not rate is 92, which is 8, 8 July. Okay, what is the T? You must calculate the T using starting from 20 April until 8 July. Okay, starting April, 30 minus 20, you get 10 days. Because they say the exact time using calendar. Okay, you calculate using calendar. 30 minus 20, 8 days. May 31, June 30, July 8. So you get that 79 days. Okay. Until 8 July is 8 days. Okay. And then you know that P is 12,000. Okay. P is 12,000. T is 79 divided by 365. You get that 0 0.2164383. And then I equal to 92. Okay. I equal to PRT. You know that 92 I P 12,000 R and this is T. Okay. This one P multiple with T. I get that this one R. This is I. Then I move this one to the left side. You will be divided. And you get the R equal to 0, 3, 5, 4. Or you can change it into decimal point. Multiple with 100. You get at 3.54. Okay. You get that the value of R using Z time. Next one is a present value. Okay, you know that you use that S equal to P1 plus RT. P is a present value. So you just move this one to the left side. So S divided by 1 plus RT. Or if you move to the upstate, it becomes power of negative 1. Okay. Find the present value, 8% simple interest. Which is deep about 3000 do it in 10 months. So you have a timeline P and S. Okay, find the present value. You don't know what is the present value, but you know that the deep is a 3000 and the time equal to 10 months. And R is 8%, which is 0 
So S divided by 1 plus RT, 3000 divided by 1 plus R, 10 divided by 12 month must be in year time. And you get that P equal to 281.50. Or you can do this one. S equal to P P plus I Okay P plus I Or P equal to S minus I Which is I move to the left side Yes S minus I. Okay. But for this case, you doesn't know what is I because I is equal to PRT, but you don't know P. Okay. So what I will do, I will do like this one first. Okay. If they give you I, so you don't need to find using this formula, you can directly find the P using this formula S minus I. Since we doesn't know the P, so we need to find using the S equal to P1 plus RT. Okay, S equal to P1 plus RT. P equal to S divided by 1 plus RT. Okay, S divided by 1 plus RT. <coughs> Next one. Suppose that you have 24 months ago, the sum of money was invested. Now the investment is 12,000. If the investment extends for another 24 months, it will become 40,000. Find the original principle and the simple interest rate that was offered. Okay. You know that you have a timeline, okay? You have that 24 months, you get that 12,000. And then if you have 10 again, 24 months, you will get that 40,000. Okay, you doesn't know the P. Okay, that's why the S1 is 12,000. And S2 is 40,000, the maturity then 1. And time 1 is 24 divided by 12 is 2 years. 22 is 48 divided by 12 is 40 years. 4 years is 24, 24 is 48 divided by 12 is 4 years. Okay, I use this one S equal to P1 plus RT. 12,000 equal to P1 plus 2 R. Because we doesn't know R and we doesn't know P. Okay, 40,000 equal to P1 plus 4R. We doesn't know P then and R. So, they do a two equation. Equation 1 and equation 2. Okay. And then I divide 2 divided by 1. Which is bahagi. 14,000 14, bahagi dengan. Divide by 12,000. You get that 7, 7 over 6. 1 plus 2. Uh, 1 over 4R divided by 1 to R. 1 for R divide by 1 plus 2 R. Okay, I move this one to the left side after that. 7. I move this one to the left side. And 6 move to the left side. 7, 1 plus 2 R. 6, 1 plus 4 R. <coughs> okay. And then I multiple inside. 7 plus 40 R equal to 6 plus 24 R. And then I move 40R to the left side and 6 move to the left side. 24 minus 14, 7 minus 6, 10R equal to 1, 10 move to the left one, 1 over 10 is 0.1 or 10%. Okay, to get P, you already know S, you already know R, you already know T. Just substitute this one and you get that 10 equal to 10,000. Okay. 